Uh, resetting today's trending topics, how about BYU hoops, their schedule and roster, notably December. And what better way to bring in Mark Pope, assistant basketball coach at BYU, than to discuss what we hope is a December to remember. Coach, our Twitter question today is, what is the biggest game for BYU sports in December? What do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I hope it, I hope there's a big time bowl game going on. Yes. And and we're gonna have we're gonna have some you know we're gonna have some great games ourselves. Uh, that that stretch in December, um, especially the stretch at home. I mean, we have some really tough road games. We're at Utah State, at Weber State, both really good teams. But but our our home stretch is, is terrific. We've got. Uh, UMass and Stanford and Utah and uh, just a, a, a terrific slate of games. And then in the end of December, we get a start conference, very first game of the conference season against the Zags. And then follow that with a Portland team that has everybody returning from a squad that should have finished in the top four in the league last year, except for injuries. So it, it's going to be a fun month. Would you have rather played Gonzaga when the students were back? Well, listen. I, I hope I hope some students will come back, and I, I'm, I have no doubt that the Marriott Center will be packed, and and uh, we'll have we'll have great fans, and great support there. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have to maybe we'll have to work that out so we can start school a couple days earlier. I don't know if people <laughs> would be happy about that. You also finalized the roster yesterday. At least it was it was released officially, and uh, we can't help but notice. But Corbin Kafusi is now a member of the BYU basketball team. He's six ten, and apparently. Dunking on everybody, and he's wearing number forty-four. Coach was 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 Corbin wearing number forty-four? A I guess a pinpointed move so that Gonzaga would worry about and have nightmares about the forty-four and the Kafusi name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, that was that was, that was, a, that was a couple of years ago, but <laughs> but I, I'll tell you what. This this young man, um, he has a chance to be a, a terrific player. I think mostly because he just loves. He loves to play, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see what he can bring to our team. He's got um, just a obviously great size and strength and athleticism, and uh, he he's got a big time motor. We're really excited about his potential. I, honestly, I've only I've only seen him uh, play once or twice during our camp, but I've heard plenty of reports from our guys that that he's a force to be reckoned with. So it's going to be fun to have him on the team. How did that happen? How did he uh, go from playing football to getting on the basketball team? Well, I think a number of things happened. I think the, probably the first thing that happened was um, he, he had a, a major growth spurt on his mission. Uh, it's funny to talk to, to Bronson because he, he was like, man, my brother came home and he was just uh, didn't even hardly recognize him. And... Um, you know, he's trying to get back in shape and going through football workouts. And, you know, I think he was coming and playing with our guys from time to time. And I think, uh, you know, you have to ask Corbin, but I think that that over the course of a few months, he just he just really felt like his his heart was to play basketball. So uh, that's, a, that's a blessing for us, I'll tell you, because I think he's going to be really good. Hey, Mark, we have a tweet coming in uh, in in reference to you hoping that the students come back early. At RK Lanning says, leaving Provo late and coming back early for the Stanford and Gonzaga games. Can't miss my Cougars. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll we'll figure out some promotional deal. We can can, uh, really hook up those students way down the line in front of the Marriott Center for those games because it's going to be fun. (laughs) Mark, you have 18 players on the roster, 17 eligible. Kyle Davis will redshirt this year. How do you plan on managing 17, especially after going from only 10 available guys last year? Well, you know, there's a fascinating structure in basketball. Um, The assistant coaches get paid very little, and the head coach gets paid a lot, and that's because he is the one. He is the one who will who will who will work these numbers. Listen, coach, (laughs) coach, coach Rose has has any number of unbelievable skills and talents in terms of coaching. And one of them is, is, is managing players and putting them all in spots where they can be really successful. And so, you know, having 18 players on the roster is not easy, 
But if there's anybody in the country in college coaching right now that will handle it uh, to perfection, it's Coach Rose. I mean, that, that's one of his greatest strengths, uh, and, and he'll do that perfectly this year. Mark Pope, BYU assistant basketball coach and NCAA champion at Kentucky in 1996 on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, let's get the injury update. A lot of people are wondering about Kyle Collinsworth and his return from a torn ACL. What can you tell us about Kyle and uh, his road back on this recovery train? Kyle's doing great. Um, you know, you, you, with, with these kind of deals, you just never know. It's kind of you take it day by day. But so far, he's in he's in month five, and and uh, he's done. He's he's been incredibly diligent about his treatments and his his therapy and keeping his body really really fit. Uh, he's done an unbelievable job, and so we have every expectation that he's going to have an unbelievable season uh, this year. Um, that he'll be back in full strength. Now, when that happens, we just don't know. You know, that's up to the doctors. Thankfully, they, they, they have to make that hard decision about, you know, at what stage he can go three-quarter speed and when he can go full speed and when he can play in live games. But but so far up to this point, he's done everything that's been asked of him, and, he, and he's recovering well. Mark, a lot of people have questions, too, about a guy that wasn't on the roster, maybe they thought might be, which is Nick Emery, uh, off a mission from Germany, had surgery successfully, it sounds like, last night. What can you tell us about Nick Emery's status? So, you know, you're, you're right. Nick had surgery yesterday, and, and it was really successful. And, and so they'll monitor his recovery here for the next several weeks. Um, and kind of every option is open for him right now. Um, you know, it, 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 there is a probably a reasonable uh, reasonably good chance that he'll need to have surgery on the other side. Um, but we'll kind of see how the recovery goes. And, and again, with, with Nick, take everything day by day. The most important thing for him is that he's in really good spirits and that, uh, you know, he, he knows that he needed to come back and, and kind of have this medical care. And then as that goes on, you know, he'll, he'll you know, figure out what, what kind of lies in his future. So, uh, you know, the, the, the most important thing is the surgery was really successful yesterday and, and we'll kind of watch, you know, with great anticipation as we see how he recovers. Is there any chance that Nick Emery plays basketball for BYU this season? Uh, well, I mean, any chance, maybe. I mean, I'm a huge Dumb and Dumber fan, and, and you know, there's always a chance, right? <laughs> but, uh, is, the hope, is the hope but, with the timing with him that – you know, if he if he can go back out, that works. You know, into kind of the the bigger plan since you already have five walk-ons. Yeah, you know, listen. The most important thing, of course, for Nick is that is it is twofold. One is that he gets healthy. I mean, that's why he's back right now is to yeah. to make sure that his health is taken care of. And then and then when you know that that could be somewhat of a lengthy process. And then then at that point, he'll you know consult with the people closest to him and, and figure out what his next step is. And, and he, like I said, he has every option on the table. And, uh, he, listen, he is a sweet, uh, smart, driven young man, and, and he'll, he'll make the, 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 the decision that is right and whatever that is. And so, you know, we'll just kind of wait and see. And this, this whole thing is just kind of, you know, he's going to kind of take it day by day and figure out how this is going to work. Yeah. BYU basketball assistant coach Mark Pope on BYU Sports Nation. Let's go back to the schedule now, Coach. Uh, you opened with Long Beach State on November 14th. Then the EA Sports Maui Invitational officially begins with a couple of home games against Arkansas, Little Rock, and Southern Virginia before you head to the actual islands for a rivalry showdown with San Diego State. What was your reaction when you found out that San Diego State was the team you were going to play when you hit the islands? Well, I, I, it was actually I was really excited. You know, I missed the uh, BYU San Diego State rivalry, especially when it was at its, its most heated. But I've heard story after story. Uh, uh, I've got to know uh, Coach Fisher uh, reasonably well, and 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 have a real appreciation for his program and what he's done there. And I know that him and Coach Rose have an unbelievably good relationship. Um, and so that's going to be fun. It's going to be a great challenge. There's two teams to play uh, drastically contrasting styles with, with very different personnel. And, uh, it's, you know, in, in the past, it's always proven to be an epic battle. It's going to be nice to do it uh, in the beautiful humidity of Hawaii. Can't wait. Is this uh, schedule tougher than last year's to you? Um, 
it's it's I don't know if it's tougher. You know, we were on the road so much last yeah. year in the non cop. Uh, I'll give you an example. You know, that that, that four-game stretch we have at home at the end of December, UMass, Stanford, Portland, Gonzaga, that's an unbelievably, unbelievably difficult four-game stretch. Um, But it's at home, which is great for us. Last year, we had the equivalent uh, four-game stretch that was on the road. Yeah. And so, 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 you know, that, that would be the one difference. I think it's... The, the competition is probably equally as tough, if not better. Uh, I think um, I think that, uh, for example, I think Utah's going to be terrific this year. I think Weber State's going to be really terrific again. Stanford is going to go from having a, 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 a very, very veteran team to having some key veterans returning and then an unbelievably talented freshman class coming in. So it's going to be it's, – and UMass, of course, is, has got most of their – Guys back, and, and including a couple guys that drove us absolutely nuts uh, in Massachusetts. So, so it's it's, it's going to be a really difficult schedule, but it's what it's what we want. I mean, we want to play great teams and, and put together a great schedule. So we're excited about the challenge. Well, certainly, Coach Rose has figured out something in terms of scheduling. If you want to get to the NCAA tournament, I talk a lot about that at length though, over the whole spring uh, term of of BYU basketball, and as you guys approached the NCAA tournament. Do you not think that he has it has it all figured out in terms of how to get into the tournament? Because I, I feel like there's not a coach that does it better in the country given what he has to do with his roster and the fact that he's at a unique place like BYU. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he, he has got this thing figured out. It's, 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 it's interesting because, you know, Coach Rose and Coach Lacombe are the masterminds behind our schedule every year. And so – I won't lie to you, about uh, sometime early in January, there was one moment where we were sitting in the locker room and we were all looking at Coach Tom and being like, nice work, buddy. <laughs> this is that good. I think, I, think, I think we were 8-7 and seven at the time. But, but as always, Coach Rose, Coach Lacombe know better than the rest of us because um, the, the, the schedule was a, was a major reason why we why – we, we're a 10th seed in the NCAA tournament last year. Yeah, well, it's certainly fun to have challenging games on the schedule and some great ones at home, so I can't wait for this. We appreciate the time, Mark. Best of luck with everything in the offseason. All right, guys, thanks.